Okay, oh, a few minutes late here. Sorry, guys. Hopefully, you're all waiting with bated breath and ready to have some fun with me. Okay. Hey! <laughs> Sorry, I'm a few minutes late. There's always some little extra technical thing you're not expecting to happen, right? <laughs> If you're here, say hello. I'd love to hear from you guys. I always like to hear where you're from. Hope you guys are doing great and having a creative week. I can't believe it's Wednesday already. Time is just flying by. So if you haven't um, seen my messages on Facebook today, I am doing a takeover for the Great Beat Extravaganza. And so I'll be posting throughout the day fun little tidbits and inspiration and all sorts of little behind the scenes things over there. And we're doing um, two $30 Humble Beads gift certificate giveaways. And so this is all in preparation for the Great Beat Extravaganza that's going to be June 11th through the 13th. And so make sure to check out our page, the Great Beat Extravaganza. Join and enter in to win those um, drawings. You get two chances to win the drawings and it's really easy. All you have to do is um, follow our Instagram account and share our page. And that's it. And you're in the drawing for the $30 gift certificates. And I'll be drawing two winners tonight. Hi, everybody. Hi, Debbie and Amy. Alice from Florida. We got Candy from uh, Minnesota. Lauren, Karen, Trudy, Marlene. Hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> I love, I love, um, being able to do little videos and talk with you guys. It just brightens up my day. I really miss um, bead events and being with people in person. And so this is definitely uh, the next best thing. So super excited about that. Okay, so did you guys see my little earrings that I posted? I have a super fun fringe earring for you today. I've been looking at all these big earrings and I love the look of them. So I wanted something that kind of spread out and had like a fringe macrame kind of feel but um i can't do heavy earrings so these are with polymer clay and wax linen and they are super super lightweight even though they're quite big and so i love them i hope you guys are loving them too and all right dina i missed you're autocorrect, but I know it's always a challenge, isn't it? I'm going to just flip over the camera and we are going to get started right away. Hi, Cheryl from Ohio. It's raining there. It was raining here today. I'm a little fuzzy headed because now it's muggy <laughs> and that's Michigan. <laughs> yeah, so all right, let's flip this over and get this party started because that's why you guys are here, right? <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, Deb. I really appreciate that. So I did these in two colors, and then we're going to do a third color way on the video today. So um, I will admit I did these to match my clothing. <laughs> so I just ordered a purple dress. So uh, these are to match my purple dress. And then I always wear teal or green, something nature-y. So these are the two that I made for myself. And then the third one that I'm going to do today is going to be slightly patriotic since it's Memorial Day. And, um, you know, just wanted to do something a little different. I'm not a bright red, white and blue kind of person, but I thought we could give a little nod with this coppery red and some of these darker shades of navy blue. And um, this is like a Picasso red so it's really muted and then a silvery little color for the white so that's what we're going to do for the video these are with four millimeter check glass beads let me put this up right here so you can see these are faceted and four millimeter check glass cute tiny adds a lot of texture and interest to your designs and I also Think this project would look great with oh, come on camera melons so i have the little four millimeter melon beads love them denise i was a little late so we actually just started so you haven't missed a single thing <laughs> lynn does anyone pick out their jewelry first and then their clothes to match yes sometimes or sometimes i go and buy an outfit just to match a piece of jewelry that i made <laughs> Hi, Lynn. 
nice to have you here. Okay, so uh, four millimeter melons work, and also these little trieca beads, which are the polish, I mean, um, hand cut triangle type beads. I thought those would look cute too. You could also just use four millimeter polished glass if you have that too. I don't offer that in the shop, but I do offer the four millimeter English cuts, the melons, and the triacas in a whole rainbow of colors. So whatever color you needed to match your outfit, we got them. And then I'm going to use a 12 millimeter uh, hibiscus bead, and then two of my branch polymer clay disc beads. So let me go ahead and get these cut up real quick. So satisfying. <laughs> Didn't mean for those to go everywhere. Okay. And we're going to need two ply um, two ply wax linen is what we're going to use for this project. So make sure you have the two ply wax linen. It um, will work much better with your beads. Oh no! You're in Vienna and the cicadas are making a mess, Lauren. Ah! I would not want to be where one of those hundred year cicada deals are going on or 17 year or whatever whatever the deal is. Um, in case you're wondering what I'm doing, I've lost the end to my <laughs> wax linen here. So I'm trying to find it real quick. I feel like I'm losing my mind along with the end here because I literally can't see it. Is this it? Oh, whew. <sighs> that was rough. Okay. I'm going to cut four and a half inch lengths and you'll need five for each earring. And again, this is the two ply wax linen. The four ply is going to be a little too thick. So you want to use the two ply and I'm using a maroon color, like a burgundy. Oh, I keep getting scared. There's a fly on my wall and every time I look over there I think it's a spider. <laughs> and I don't know where that fly came from because we don't have any other little guys floating around. Okay, I'm going to polish the wax linen first and just with a piece of craft paper or a paper bag you're just going to run them the paper. I'm just pinching as I'm pulling it through. I start in the middle and go to each end and do each one two times. This is going to make your beads go on much quicker and also um, just makes it look nicer, we found. You're going to need two 15 millimeter jump rings and these are smooth ones that I have here and you want to close those up nice and tight. <laughs> yeah, the thing is the fly keeps landing on my lights here and that's the only time I see them and I can't hit them and, you know, smash my lights. They're my studio lights, not like a a lamp, Sue. So, <laughs> Sherry, you've never used wax linen. Well, welcome, my friend. You are going to love it. Uh, wax linen, it's from Ireland and it's very high quality, consistent color and texture. And it has wax on it, just as it says. And so, when you make a knot, the knots stay. And um, I really love the color and texture of wax linen. And I love that you don't have to glue your knots. 
because the wax holds your knots together. Oh, not even telling you guys what I'm doing. <sighs> okay, so I've cut my five pieces here. <laughs> <laughs> and I've uh, folded them over in half and I'm going to stick the end from the front to the back of the jump ring and then I'm going to take the two pieces that are in the front and pull them through the loop in the back and this is a lark's head knot sorry I was just working away over here <laughs> okay so let me uh, do that again. So I have the piece folded in half, and this is four and a half inches of wax linen. And so the loop's in the back now, and I'm going to pull the two strands through the back of the loop, and then tighten them up to make that lark's head knot. And I'm trying to keep them on the opposite side of the hole on my, I mean the seam on my jump ring, so my seam will be on the top. Oh yes, basket makers love to use wax linen. Also, book binders too use wax linen. So, uh, Beverly, the wax linen you get at my shop, humblebeads.com. And I have lots of different colors in, it'll say two ply right on the picture, because I offer two and four ply. So you want to make sure you get the one that says two ply on the picture. Okay, so I've done five of these and all the knots are in the front and the um, seam is at the top. Okay. I'm gonna grab one of each of my beads here and I'm gonna do it red, white, and blue. I want the beads to go on both strands, so I'm going to twist them together. I'm, gonna, I'm going to twist them together so that it will be easier to get the beads through the bead. I mean, the beads on the string. <laughs> Let's try that. Okay. And you want to twist it till it's a nice little point so it will go through your beads easily. See, it'll just slip right on like that. And I'm going to do all three beads at once. And I'm going to push them down. There's my red, white, and blue. And I'm going to tie a knot. So you can do this two ways. It may help to have five inches to start out with if you're not used to tying knots so that you have a little extra string. And I'll put that in the instructions that I write up, or not the instructions, but the supply list that I put on the blog today. And if you have a little bit of string here, you can just take these two and tie them into a knot like just a regular knot with these two. And you would just go like this, pull it through, and just tie it as a knot. And you can see it's going to give you two different looks. So this is tying it as a knot with the two strands together. So I would go just like this and pull it tight. Just a regular knot with the two strands. And that will give you this look, where they're kind of spread out a little bit more. I don't know if that... There we go. Or the knot I'm going to show you, they kind of have a larger knot at the bottom. And so this one I recommend probably starting with 5 inches, just so that you have a little bit longer uh, thread to work with to tie that knot. Because I like to wrap it around my finger to get a good knot, but... Um, I'm just going to have to improvise here and start out with a little circle. Pull my two strands through and then you want to pull that string down so it's right at your beads. You'll notice I work nice and slow to get that knot really tight. 
Okay. So let's go ahead and do that again. You're going to start by twisting these two together so your bead will just slip right on. And I'm going to start with red, then white and blue. that down and then I'm going to make a circle with my string here make sure you guys can see this really well so I start out with a circle make sure your two threads stay together as much as possible stick the end through the circle and then I'm pulling down on the loop here as I pull onto my loose I mean the end of the threads and that would give us a nice tight knot there and again repeating the same <laughs> I um I love playing with color Gerald so um yeah that's my favorite part is coming up with color combinations so I'm always glad to share that and I do like showing different options with different beads that will work with a project too because sometimes you just want to work with what you have and if you're following someone else's project, you may be a little hesitant to do that. So I definitely like to share some different options. Okay, again, making a circle with my wax linen here. I'm going to take my two ends and pull them through the circle. And I'm pushing down on the knot as I'm pulling up. So pushing the knot down towards my bead and pulling up at the same time to get a nice tight knot. And I'm going nice and slow and making sure I push that knot down really far. And this is a super easy, fun, relaxing project. It's one of those, um, you know, you could whip up in a lot of different colors. So maybe if you're doing shows again for the season or if you um, have some birthday or graduation gifts to whip up you could do them in all different colors that's a great thing about polymer clay is that you can um, you can have a bigger earring and it's going to be really lightweight because the clay beads are so, so lightweight. As opposed to using a glass or ceramic bead, which um, you just have to be more aware of how big your design is going to get. Okay. All right. Oop. I actually skipped one, but doesn't matter what order we do them in. <laughs> So I'm twisting these together so that that knot is nice and tight, or not knot, but the threads, so that I can string my beads on. So what do you guys think? red white and blue would you wear it I um I kind of get a little nervous wearing like Christmas colors or red white and blue it really isn't exactly my style but if I can do it like in a muted a muted more understated way then I'm much more likely to do it and um you know a white shirt jeans and these earrings you would definitely give a little nod to the 
honoring and celebrations that we're doing this weekend here in the States. Okay, let me try this again. <laughs> My strings didn't stay together, and if your strings aren't staying together, you want to redo it so that they're together. Okay. Oh, good. I, I like, I like hearing that I wasn't really off, <laughs> off my mark doing red, white, and blue. Okay. So I have my beads there ready to go. And now if you have a beading all, okay, does it bother me that my lines weren't straight? <laughs> if you have a beading all or some little tool that has a point to it, th that would be handy for this fringing part. So what you're going to do is you're going to separate the two pieces here, like so, and now you're going to twist them in the opposite direction. See how they just came apart? And as soon as you see them into two strands, use your, um, use your tool to separate them. So again, you're going to twist these in the opposite direction that the yarn is twisted in and then use your tool to separate them. And any little pointy tool will work that you have in your studio. We all have something. <laughs> Even a little head pin would work if you didn't have something else. Or, um, you know, a little sewing needle or pin that you use for sewing. Okay, you wanna make sure you're definitely getting in between the two strands and not separating the strand even further. Like you can definitely see there's two strands, but you could fray the thread even more, but you don't really want to. So you wanna make sure they should look even. And that's how you know you've gotten the two. Okay, so just twisting it in the opposite direction that's naturally twisted in and then when you see an opening in between the two twists that's where you want to pull your tool and we're not going to have such crazy fringe we're going to cut that up <laughs> so oh Lynn you have a great question there. How do I come up with my designs? Do I sketch them out in a notebook by my bed stand? Do I pay fairies for secrets? No. Um, so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll start by going through Pinterest and looking at different styles and techniques and things that I like. And I think, okay, so how could I make this into um, my own design. So yesterday, I actually came up with this project yesterday. <laughs> it's just been a crazy week. And so I was looking through Pinterest and I saw some um, necklaces they were making with little tassels on the bottom. And it just sparked the idea with the little tassels on the bottom in the way they were. So like each one of these were a little tassel instead of beaded. And then I saw another design and it had um, knotting, but they were done in different colored knots. I don't know how they did that, but I thought, ooh, that would be fun to do in beads. So um, one of the things as an artist that you do, instead of copying from one source of inspiration, is you look at several different sources of inspiration and let that spark a new idea. So that's what I did for this design, is I had looked up several different things that were inspiring to me, and um, each one kind of made me think of, oh, I could do something like that, or something like that. And then even when I had sat down to make this design, I had first tried to do them with um, interlocking super duos, and I was like, oh, that really wasn't quite the look I was going for. And so there's also that physical playing. Like once you have the idea, it's still just sitting down 
in making it. Okay, so I got some crazy fringe here and I'm um, going for a little less crazy. So I'm gonna just cut these. Give them a little haircut. We're all getting haircuts now, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited guys I was able to schedule a massage for the first time tonight since the pandemic so I'm like okay this feels like real life now and then next week I'm going to get my first haircut since you know we've been quarantining I'll feel like a real person <laughs> okay and that's that's the bottom of the earring finished really like this I would actually wear this all the time because it's not really not really red white and blue I mean like we know it's red white and blue but it just looks kind of earthy and um cool I like it <laughs> they would look like they do look like little look like little roots at the end there don't they okay now I'm going to pull out my hibiscus a little spacer because I always like to use a metallic or a glass spacer in between um, two larger beads so I'm going to use my little metallic spacer and my disc bead and I have 20 gauge para wire in the brass color so I'm going to trim off the end and you need about two and a half inches and I'm just going to do simple loops on here just the easiest technique we can come up with for this project I'm gonna slide on my flower my spacer and my disc bead now you want one of these to be going left and right your loop and then the other one is going to be going front and back and it doesn't matter right now which way you have it because we're just going to turn it around when we put the earring on sorry guys i have to do this off screen <laughs> get it a little closer to me okay there we go so got my little loop there so I have a loop on the top and the bottom and of course you're gonna want to just twist this so that the front to back is on the bottom and I'm gonna open this up make sure you slide this on so that the loop is ending in the back and I'm gonna grab my little ear wire here and I love using um, natural brass ear wires and we offer these in the shop and natural brass doesn't have any nickel in them and that's often what irritates people who have allergies and so or sensitivities I can't wear any other metals except for the natural brass everything else makes my ears burn so if you have that trouble definitely give the natural brass a try okay there's my earring you guys humble beadsy patriotic <laughs> that's what we're gonna go for all right that's it that's all there was to it and now like I said you can make these in all different colors I'm gonna have the three colorway kits at three o'clock today on my website humblebeads.com and then you'll be able to find the beads there too. I sell everything that I used for the project today is on the website. Yes, Marlene, having all these beads around definitely does help the creative process. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining me. Definitely head over to the Great Bead Extravaganza to join me for the rest of the day over there. Make sure when you're over there that you on your notice your um, notification settings make sure you click to all notifications if not you're gonna miss out designs and they only show highlights from the day that's something Facebook has recently changed so um, you definitely wanna 
make sure you're getting all the messages because you don't want to miss out on any cool stuff like our giveaway that we're doing today. All right, guys, thank you so, so much. So kits will be available at three o'clock today on the website. And if you're, um, if you're just joining me today, I don't do tons of kits. We're a small business and um, family business, just just me and my husband and my assistant. That's the three of us. And so I just do a small offering of kits each week for the Bead Table Wednesday. And then you can do a la carte and make your own kits with the beads that we offer and everything that we have on the website is available to make the projects. All right, guys, thank you. You have a great week and I will see you on Friday for our coffee break. And I will have new humble beads for you guys on Friday for our coffee break. And that will be at 3 p.m. on Friday, Eastern Standard Time. All right, guys, bye. Thank you.